The roller coaster stood stagnant in the ever growing grass. Water ride boats grew dirty and covered with leaves. The psychedelic cat, or is it a dragon, opens its mouth, which used to send roller coaster carts into a blue tunnel. But the rails sit empty now. Algae made its home on the surface of the lake, where lonely swan boats sit with a Viking ship wedged between the bridge, once a walkway for excited children, now abandoned. Hello and welcome to another episode of Idle and Abandoned, the podcast where we discover the history behind the most intriguing abandoned places around the world. I'm your host Tessa and today we are going to be exploring the past, present and future of Berlin's communist amusement park, Spree Park. I also want to apologise in advance for any names or words that I might mispronounce. Stuck between the Plantewald Forest and River Spree in Berlin is an overgrown urban jungle full of faded dinosaur statues, rusty roller coaster tracks and a large ferris wheel which still groans to life after a whistle of wind. This is what remains of Spree Park, the amusement park which fought through the fall of the Berlin Wall only to fall itself in the early 2000s. A place which holds happy memories, but is haunted by those which led to its demise. On October 4, 1969, the VEB Kulturpark Plantewald was officially opened to celebrate the German Democratic Republic, also known as the GDR's, 20th birthday. Kulturpark was the first permanent leisure and amusement park in East Germany, and was constructed on a 29.5 hectare piece of land. There wasn't much information on what the park included, However, its centrepiece was a 40-metre ferris wheel with 36 brightly coloured cabins. The park thrived through the communist era, with 1.7 million visitors reported annually. In 1989, Culture Park's main attraction, the ferris wheel, got an upgrade to celebrate the GDR's 40th birthday. It became a 45-metre model with 40 cabins to commemorate the celebration. However, just months after the new ferris wheel was unveiled, the Berlin Wall fell. Without the financial support of the government, Culture Park was on the lookout for an investor to take over the hefty maintenance costs. It was in 1991 that Norbert Witt came to the rescue with big dreams for the amusement park. Unfortunately, Witt had a very controversial past when it came to amusement parks. In 1981, 10 years before he took over Culture Park, he was attempting to repair the catapult roller coaster in a Hamburg carnival when the crane he was using crashed into a nearby carousel, killing seven people and injuring 15. It was considered Germany's worst carnival disaster at the time. Despite this spotty past, Witt acquired the lease to Culture Park, putting it under his wife Pia's name. Witt dreamed to bring the park up to Western European standards and invested a considerable amount in revamping it. Firstly, he changed the name to Spree Park, after the River Spree which borders one side of the park. And in 1992, Spree Park reopened, with a whole new landscape and rides. Witt had replaced the asphalt surface with a grass and water landscape, complete with canals and a lake, and installed a multitude of new rides and attractions, many from the Mirapolis Amusement Park in Paris. These included a Grand Canyon water ride, giant rotating teacups, pirate ship swing, roller coaster, looping track and attractions such as a Piccadilly circus tent and Wild West Town, complete with saloon, bank and play halls where stuntmen would perform for audiences. He even added a mini English village and it was said that the scenery was changed multiple times throughout Witt's time running the park. After all the renovations, not much of the original GDR park remained. The entrance houses and toilet were kept and the only attraction to survive was the Ferris wheel. Witt believed in his investment and expected to be able to get up to 1.8 million visitors per year. In 1993, Spree Park flourished with 1.5 million visitors, but that was as good as it got. By 1997, Witt had invested 40 million into upgrading the park, but visitors' numbers continued to slack and slow. The lack of visitors was influenced by many factors. Firstly, the nearby autobahn gave access to bigger, better parks just a short drive away. Then there was the escalating prices. As the numbers continued to drop, the entrance fee was increased, and one of the biggest issues for Witt was the park's lack of parking. The nearby Plantewald Forest had long been used for visitor parking, but during Witt's ownership of Spree Park, the city declared the forest a nature reserve, 
which prevented WIT from using or developing the area for the parking spaces that Spree Park desperately needed. Eventually, on November 4, 2001, Norbert Witt's wife, Pia, who held the lease, closed the gates and Spree Park filed for bankruptcy. When the bankruptcy was filed, debts of 11 to 15 million were reported, and it was revealed that there were rides in serious need of repair which had been neglected. And so, the gates of Spree Park closed. As of 2021, they have not yet reopened, but that is not where the story of Spree Park ends. In 2002, the Witt family's unfortunate run continued. Norbert and his family of six fled to Peru with six of Spree Park's attractions. These included the Baby Flight, Butterfly, Fun Express, Jetstar, Spider and Flying Carpet Rides, which were allowed to be transported as Witt had stated that they would be travelling for repairs. He had been told by a friend that Lima was looking for a fun park, and Witt believed that he would use the attractions he had bought to open a new Spree Park in Peru. Unfortunately, this dream too failed, as debts continued to mount and he began suffering from heart problems. In 2003, Witt was attempting to enter Germany once again, when he was seized and charged for attempting to smuggle cocaine from Peru through one of the attractions that he was transporting back. He had stuffed cocaine in the mast of the flying carpet ride. Reports vary over whether it was 181 or 167 kgs. Either way, he was caught in Germany and imprisoned for drug smuggling. After four years, he was released. But the misfortune of his family did not stop with his arrest. His son was caught in Peru and charged there for drug smuggling. As he was caught in Peru, he ended up receiving a prison sentence in Lima's Cerrita Colonia prison, where he carried out 13 years before securing a transfer to Moabit prison in 2016. Witt expressed guilt for the capture of his son when he confessed that he was responsible for the smuggling and that his son had nothing to do with it. His relationship with his wife, Pia, suffered because of this, and their relationship ended in Peru. She stated that she would never forgive him. As these events were unfolding, the previous site of Spree Park was left to rot. The roller coaster stood stagnant in the ever-growing grass. Water ride boats grew dirty and covered with leaves. The psychedelic cat, or is it a dragon, opens its mouth, which used to send roller coaster carts into a blue tunnel. But the rails sit empty now. Algae made its home on the surface of the lake, where lonely swan boats sit with a Viking ship wedged between the bridge, once a walkway for excited children, now abandoned. Cabins on the Ferris wheel ride became weathered, warped and rusted by the years of neglect. If a night wind blew, it creaked to life, letting out a groan as if it was recalling the memories of happier times. Bizarre cars with large pink lips, thick black moustaches, yellow top hats, and even see-through spectacles sit abandoned on the rails which used to pull them around the looping track. And the inside of Spree Park's building slowly grew a spotted carpet of moss and collected rubbish left by a new kind of visitor. This new kind of visitor became those who entered the park looking for a glimpse into its history, hoping to experience the thrill of exploring the haunting grounds of the old amusement park. From September 2008 to April 2014, Christopher Flade, the operator of Spree Park's fan site and author of a book on Spree Park, ran two-hour tours every weekend through the former visitor area. These tours exposed its history and demise and showcased its decay. Flade mentioned in an interview that he had to warn tour visitors about the dangers of the crumbling park. He said that visitors can't go up to the roller coaster anymore as its wooden boards are splattered with holes ready to collapse. From 2011 to 2014, the park became more popular, becoming a venue for film shooting, live theatre, band performances, premiere screenings, and even a Christmas market around the old Ferris wheel. Despite the tours, explorers and vandals still entered the park on their own to experience the airy atmosphere of the place. Vandals covered the dinosaur statues and graffiti. Some were even stolen, along with other leftovers from the park's heyday. Explorers jump the fence to take pictures and drink in the memories locked inside the area, or relive a happier time. In 2013, one such explorer was a 90-year-old woman who broke in and had to be rescued by security after hopping into one of the Ferris wheel cabins, which was then lifted into the air by the wind. She claimed that she had visited the park as a child and just wanted to experience the joy again. And yet, the story of Spree Park continues. In March 2014, the city bought the site back in a murky deal for just over $2 million. 
Other potential investors had been scared away by the lease conditions which stipulated that the land must be used for an amusement or recreational park until 2061, dashing any hopes of development. This was where Flade's tours stopped. However, it didn't deter people from climbing the fence and accessing the site. In August 2014, a fire broke out in Spree Park which destroyed a 5,000 square metre area of the Old English-themed village. An investigation came to the conclusion that it was arson and resulted in a new fence and permanent security, including dogs. In 2016, the park was taken over by Grün Berlin GmbH, which is an organisation owned by the city of Berlin. They began tours again around July 2016, which was said to be shorter, much less informative, and at varying days and times. However, Grün Berlin, much like Norbert Witt, had big plans for Spree Park. The institution unveiled plans in 2018 to reopen the park in 2026 as a location for the public to enjoy arts and culture. They announced that the old buildings and rides would become stages for culture and art to provide special experiences to people's lives. Their other aim was to preserve the rides, architecture and even vegetation from decay. Furthermore, the planning, construction and operation of the new Spree Park also aims to be fully sustainable and even certified by an independent institute. The latest updates from Grün Berlin come from 2019 when the Egg House, which is a 19th century red brick building on the outskirts of the park, had its refurbishment into a restaurant with beer garden started. It plans to be open in 2022. Work has also begun on refurbishing the Ferris Wheel, which is said to be the only moving ride in the new arts and culture park. For now, the area sits lonely. Apart from the constant security and the rushing feet and snapping cameras of gutsy explorers who dare to visit the site of a communist amusement park turned European copycat turned bankrupt site. The future could hold more screaming children and family activities, but the question remains. Is Wit's bad luck still stuck to the place? Or is there some other grisly part of its past that is yet to be uncovered? The lovers of Spree Park can hope to one day see the bright Ferris wheel cabins turning again. But for now, it sits abandoned. Thank you for listening to this episode of Idle and Abandoned. If you enjoyed it, check out our YouTube and social media for more content, photos and videos of this and other abandoned places. All links are in the description below. Until next time, I'm Tessa and this was the story of Spree Park.